I've been PKing on RuneScape for a long time, and throughout the years I've picked up quite a few tips and tricks along the way. Today, I'll be sharing my knowledge of PKing with you guys to improve your PKing abilities. Whether you're on a low level pure or a max main, all the lessons in this video can be used in the wilderness. So if you pay attention, then by the end of this video, you'll know a few more ways to survive and strive in the wilderness. Let's get it. Bruce and Restores are what's going to keep you alive in the wilderness, but many people misuse them. Potions and RuneScape act differently than food because they don't interrupt your attacks. The reason people misuse brews is they're chugging away at their brews when they need to heal and they're not attacking their opponent back, losing vital hits during the fight. To correctly use your brews during a fight, every time you go below 75% of your HP, you want to sip a brew and then attack your opponent. You want to do this three times followed by a restore sip to get your stats back to normal. But every time you sip, you need to remember to continue to attack your opponent. This will ensure that you miss no hits and get the maximum DPS on your opponent while still regaining your HP. Now, you always want to bring a couple of what we call combo eats with you in the wilderness. This is just a regular type of food paired with your brews. And if you get way too low hit points and you're worried you're about to die, then you eat your food followed by a brew, which will bring your HP up way more than just drinking a brew dose would. The most important thing to remember when using brews and restores is just to always attack your opponent back. Don't miss any hits between brewing and restoring. Every time you click your brew, you click your opponent after. Alright, so have you ever been watching somebody fight and you see them planting a bunch of flowers on the ground and you wonder what the hell is going on? Well, there's actually a purpose to this. When you plant a mithril seed, your character automatically moves one square to the west, even if you're frozen. And this has many different uses such as escaping a PKer, countering death.pking, move in melee range of your opponent, and stopping somebody from escaping as well. Let's give examples of all the reasons why you should bring Mithril Seeds. Starting with using Mithril Seeds to escape, I had my fight frozen and almost out of food and he smartly planted a couple of Mithril Seeds which pushed him around a tree which allowed me to not attack him and allowed him to escape. Next is to counter somebody death.pking. This is when somebody freezes you and continues to stand under you. Well, if you have mithril seeds, you can use those to push yourself out from under them and catch a freeze or just keep on attacking them and not let them abuse that ability. Mid seeds will always push you one square to the west, so if you're a couple of tiles to the east of somebody and you want to get in melee range, then all you do is plant a couple of seeds to put yourself in melee range. So the third use you can get out of mithril seeds is if you're frozen to the east of somebody, then you can plant seeds to push yourself into melee range of them, which you can use to get a KO. Watch this clip where I use my mithril seeds to get into melee range, I AGS spec this guy and then finish him off with a Karasi spec. Okay, the last and I think most useful reason you should bring mid seeds. Have you ever been fighting somebody and they freeze you and then stand under you and you can do nothing but helplessly watch them log out? With mithril seeds, you can change that. When somebody freezes and stands under you, all you do is plant a mithril seed and that'll push you out from under them, which allows you to keep on attacking them and allows you to get that KO. Moving on to our next tip, and it's gonna be probably the simplest one of the video, but also the most important, and that is don't panic. Panicking does you no good in the wilderness. When you start shaking your clicks and start doubting yourself, all it's gonna do is probably lead you to die. You need to remember, and this will come with the experience of PKing, to just stay calm and remember what you need to do. So moving on, we're talking about your combat potions. There's three different times when you should be using your combat pots and make sure that you use them throughout your fight. The first and best time to use your combat pots is the most obvious. It's right before you use your special attack. This ensures you get the max hit to KO your opponent. You can also use your potion to hide your special attack weapon. It's called a pot trick. The second time is when you're full or above full HP in your fight. You don't want to use your combat pots at low HP and then take one hit of damage and then have to brew, thus removing your stat bonus from the pot. Try to use your pots when you're full or above full HP. The third time that you should use your pots is when you have momentum in the fight. If you're getting a lot of big hits on your opponent and they're struggling to hit you back, this is a good time to give it your all and use your potions to try and continue to combo your opponent to death.
Moving on to the next topic is when to use your special attack. The best and number one time to use your special is after a big XP drop. When you see a big XP drop, this is your opportunity to go for a spec and kill your opponent. Now, whether you're on a pure or a main, this can differ and it also depends on what spec weapon you're using. But when you're on a pure using a DDS that has four specs, you wanna be constantly dropping DDS specs just to keep momentum in the fight, which could lead you to KO them with some other type of weapon like a bolt or a colossal blade hit. If you're PKing on a main, it's better to conserve your specs because you need those to get the KOs, but it's also good to be predictable and randomly throw specs in when they're not expecting it, and it can lead you to catching people off guard, which will lead to KOs. Alright, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is faking. Faking is simply switching into a different gear style and then switching quickly back to the one you originally intended to hit him with to get them to change their prayer to something else. I'll give an example right here. Say that I, he, um, my opponent is praying range and I want him to pray a mage so I can get a bolt off prayer. I'll quickly switch into my mage robes, which should make him pray mage, and I switch back to my range and then bolt him off prayer. You can do this a number of different ways, including switching into a melee attack style, which make some prop melee and then you switch back to your range and bolt there's a bunch of different fakies that you can do and this is very good for hitting your opponents off prayer Okay, so here's a clip of me doing a fakie in real time to get myself a KO. I Karasi spec this guy, which made him pray mage, and I wanted him to pray melee so I could get another Karasi off prayer. So I switched into my AGS to make him think I was going to AGS spec, which made him prop melee. And then I switched back into my Karasi and Karasi'd him for the kill. Using fakies while you're PKing will help you tremendously. Just by pulling out a DDS and running towards your opponent, and then the last second pulling out your crossbow, 90% of the time, everyone is going to prop melee, and this is going to lead to you hitting tons of bolts off prayer. Trust me, try it. That's going to be all I'm covering in today's video, guys. If you did enjoy and you picked up anything new from this video, then be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more videos like this where I'm explaining PK tips and going more in depth, then be sure to leave a comment down below. If there's anything that you would like me to cover in the next video, then leave it in the comments as well. Guys, thank you so much for watching this entire video. I appreciate it. If you would, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time.